and welcome back. Approximately two weeks ago, I posted a video about how potentially our US housing market has started to stabilize and also potentially has bottomed out. Uh, this is based on a lot of data that I collected. Uh, so for example, the number of contracts being signed for existing houses, in other words, pending home sales, in December actually increased for the first time in seven months as rates decreased from the highs we saw in late October last year. And here's the report I shared with you guys regarding uh, contracts being signed or pending home sales increasing by 2.5% from November through December 2022. A 2.5% rise in contracts being signed for existing houses. Uh, even though we saw a slight increase by 2.5%, as I share with you guys, uh, the National Association of Realtors, uh, PHI, or their pending home sale index, uh, was still at the lowest levels since June of 2010, excluding November 2022, as well as April 2020. So in other words, even though contracts being signed increased slightly in December, up by 2.5% on a month-to-month -month basis, uh, historically speaking, we're at very low levels for contracts being signed. But again, this increase of their index of contracts being signed, uh, again, is something that worth noting here because that's the first increase in seven months. Now here's something else I noted two weeks ago, and that's because we saw some very early signs that we saw an increase in the number of applications for home loans for people looking to buy a house. Uh, that's based on data from the MBA. In addition to that, the US Census Bureau reported an increase of new home sales over the past three consecutive months. That's for October, November, and December last year. As you can see right here on Uncle Fred's website right here, uh, for October, a slight increase uh, in October, another slight increase in November, and another small increase in December. So uh, on, based on an annualized basis or a seasonally adjusted annualized rate, uh, new home sales, which of course is when a contract is signed between a builder and a home buyer, so in other words, it really acts like a pending home sale, has increased for the past three months in a row. Here's what we also know as well, because this is a report that was actually just published today uh, from the National Association of Home Builders here. It says two consecutive solid monthly gains for builder confidence, uh, spurred in part by easy mortgage rates, a signal that the housing market may be turning the corner even as builders continue to contend with high construction costs and building material supply chain issues. It says builder confidence in the market for building new single family houses increased in February, the strongest reading since September of last year. Again, this is a based on report that was just published today on February 15th. In addition to this, they also noted that this was the largest monthly increase for builder sediment for building new single family houses since June of 2013, excluding the period immediately after the onset of pandemic here. And they cite one of the main reasons for this is gains for housing affordability. Uh, stay tuned though, because I have a lot to share because rates have been increasing big time. And that's kind of why I'm kind of uh, talking about what I mentioned two weeks ago when rates were about 5.99% and rates are much, much higher uh, today at the time of this video here. The National Association of Home Builders also noted that approximately 31% of all home builders reduced home prices in February. That's down from 35% in December and down from 36% in November. Also, the average price drop in February was 6% down from 8% in December and 57% of home builders offered some kind of incentive for home buyers in February, down from 62% in December. Again, though, a lot could change and a lot has changed. Take a look at this. This is very important to have a look at this because uh, this is pretty wild. Uh, the 10-year US Treasury note, or the yield on that, has increased to 3.809% an increase of almost five basis points today. It may not sound like a lot, but look at this. Average rates today, again, the 15th of February, look at this, average 30-year fix for people with exceptional credit, of course, 6.75%. Not too much far off the 12-month high of 7.37% that was set on October 20th last year. 6.75% FHA and VA loans around 6.12 to 6.15%. Again, average rates nationwide. So this is big, big news. Look at this, 6.75, one year ago, rates average at 4.12%. That's an increase of 2.63 percentage points over the past 12 months. On top of that, look at this. 
at 6.75% right now. This is actually the highest rates since, wait for it, right there, November 9th last year. So right now the average 30 year fix are at the highest rates since November 9th last year. In other words, rates have increased to a new three month high right now. And on top of that, look at this. Going back right here, which was uh, February 2nd, average rates are at 5.99%. This means average rates have increased approximately 76 basis points over the past two weeks alone. So you may be asking yourself, how does that impact home buyers? So obviously for a 1% increase in rates, that causes a 10% decrease in buyer's purchasing power. So when rates increase, of course, buyer's purchasing power decreases. In other words, you, you, you would uh, apply or actually you would get approved for a lower loan amount given the fact that rates have been increasing, right? So let's take a, let's have an example here. Let's, let's talk about example here, can't talk. So looking at someone to buy a $450,000 house 12 months ago, uh, using 5% down payment, uh, putting 5% down. And of course, one year ago, rates were averaging at 4.12%. So that would mean your average monthly housing payment, which of course in this example here is only P&I, principal and interest, is $2,071 per month. Fast forward to today though, look at this. Again, someone buying a house at $450,000, putting 5% down, the new rate at 6.75% your new housing payment would be $2,773 per month. In other words, that's an increase of around $700 more per month to buy a $450,000 house today versus one year ago. In other words, that's an increase of 34% over the past 12 months alone. Now here's something wild as well because rates went from about 4.12% now to 6.75%. Look at the total interest paid over the life of the loan, again, for 30 years. Uh, going back uh, 12 months ago at 4.12%. Look at this, your interest paid over the life of the loan over, over 30 years, assuming you obviously keep the house, of course, is just under $318,000. Fast forward today, though, look at this. Your interest paid would be $570,692, given the fact that this interest rate went up from 4.12% to 6.75%. And that's an increase of almost $253,000 more in interest payments over the life of the loan. Here's what we also know as well, because here's a new report that was actually just announced today as well. Hope you guys appreciate these timely updates here. Uh, so this is based on a report or a weekly survey from the MBA that was just posted today on the 15th. It says mortgage applications decreased 7.7% from one week ago. This is actually for the week ended February 10th this year. Again, though, this is based on total mortgage applications, which of course includes refis plus purchases decreased by 7.7%. The refi index decreased a whopping 13% last week compared to the week before that and fell 76% uh, compared to the same week one year ago. Um, also the seasonally adjusted purchase index, which of course is an index which measures the amount of people submitting applications in order to buy houses, which are using loans to buy houses, uh, decreased 6% from one week ago and was down 43% from one year ago. So according to Joel Kahn, who's the MBA's vice president and deputy chief economist, uh, he would be the VPDCE. <laughs> I just totally made that up. Anyways, mortgage rates increased across the board last week, pushed higher by market expectations that inflation will persist, thus requiring the Fed uh, to keep monetary policy restrictive for a longer time. In other words, to uh, continue to raise the federal funds rate to combat inflation. After five straight weeks of decreases, the 30-year fixed rate increased by 21 basis points to 6.39%. I believe he's referring to the uh, survey or the weekly survey conducted by uh, Freddie Mac and of course not weekly or not daily rates uh, that the uh, Mortgage News Daily reports here. Anyways, he says applications decrease for the second time in three weeks because of these higher rates. Again though, based on daily rates as of today, rates are averaging at 6.75% according to the Mortgage News Daily. He also added that purchase applications dropped to their lowest level since the beginning of the year and were more than 40% lower than a year ago. Potential buyers 
uh, remain quite sensitive to the current level of mortgage rates, which are more than two percentage points above last year's levels and have significantly reduced buyers' purchasing power, uh, just as I, I described in my example regarding the increase of rates going from 4.12% now to almost 6.8%. Now here's something we also know as well because home showings have been decreasing as of late. And I actually really love this uh, website right here, uh, showingtime.com. They actually just um, posted 2023's numbers regarding um, home showings by real estate agents showing their home buyers um, houses in North America. They just added 2023 numbers. Uh, before that it was 2020, 2021, as well as last year. So here's what they uh, noted here. I actually just found this out about an hour ago. Uh, look at this. So home showings increased in uh, the end of January. They took a slight decrease by uh, January 31st. Then they increased through February 10th, or for the week ended February 10th this year. Look at this though. For the week ended February 14th though, compared to the first week this year, we only saw a 7.2% increase in home showings across North America. Look at this though, because on February 10th, that was a 12% gain. So in more or less, what, four days, we went from a 10% gain, or actually a 12% gain, now it's only a 7.2% increase. Now here's something to keep in mind because rates again bottomed out at 5.99% on February 2nd this year. And ever since then have been more or less skyrocketing approximately 76 basis points over the past two weeks, right? Look at this though. So rates are actually showing um, increase through uh, February 10th. The week ended February 10th, but home showings have been decreasing ever since then because of course, I would imagine because rates have been increasing so much. Now here's a big picture for you guys, and this is my uh, own uh, personal opinion. I could be totally wrong here, but if rates stay, stay above 6.5%, let's say, I would imagine that home buyer demand is gonna be decreasing. If rates decrease below 6% again, I would imagine that home buying demand would be increasing again. I would just have to say that it's kind of confusing when looking at real estate market data here. I tend to make videos and they talk about different time frames, different um, stats. So I can be talking about how the housing market may be bottoming out. And then today's video, I'm talking about how the housing market doesn't appear to be bottoming out because rates have been increasing. Again, pure speculation here, but if rates stay above 6.5%, I would imagine that home buying demand would be decreasing once again. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about this? Please comment below. And of course, I appreciate you guys for watching today's video uh, and we'll see you on the next one.